John Starks. Man, John Starks is a true New York Nick. To this very day, John Starks remains one of the most popular and successful players in New York Knicks history. Watching Starks was a treat every single night. He wasn't a superstar. He was a star while in New York. A solid compliment to Patrick Ewing in scoring and hard-nosed defense. What you got with Starks was always 100% effort. He could have a night when he missed almost all of his shots, but you knew he was a streaky shooter and could get red hot any second. That's what a lot of us hoped for with every single shot put up by John. Starks on defense was a dog. He would fight, claw, and literally bark at you whenever he could. He would try to get you out of your game mentally, and a lot of times with a lot of players he succeeded. Sometimes it was just too small or too out of control, but he never lacked effort. Before we go any further, I'd like you to consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel to support. These videos take a lot of time and effort. I would really appreciate it. I'm going to go back a little to how this whole basketball story started for Starks because his story is a great example of almost zero chance to make it and even against all odds becoming an all-star. Here is how it all started. Everybody who likes your game says they like it because you're crazy. <laughs> Everybody who dislikes your game say, say they dislike it because you're crazy. <laughs> John Starks was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma on August 10th, 1965. He had unbelievable support from his family, especially his mother Irene and grandmother Callie, who he called Fire and Ice. Tulsa Central High School was his school and he played basketball there for only one year. He had no colleges showing any interest in him so he had to pay for college himself. He wanted to become, and as he said, a man with a jacket and tie and an attache case. To further his education, he enrolled into a junior college, Rogers State College, RSU, in Oklahoma. While at RSU, John was a part of the so-called taxi squad, which existed to replace players who were injured or suspended. He would not suit up for games and watched them from the stands unless needed to fill in. The reason he left RSU is that he was expelled from the school for stealing someone else's stereo equipment. He got in trouble for breaking in another person's room and stealing their boombox. Next one was Northern Oklahoma College, where he made the basketball team. For the robbery, he was sentenced to five days in jail and served it during spring break. Northern Oklahoma College also did not fit and Starks was caught smoking cannabis in the dorm. In Tulsa, he was working and making $3.35 an hour in a Safeway supermarket as a checker and a stock person. In 1986, Starks enrolled at Tulsa Junior College and tried to pursue a business degree. Starks earned himself a scholarship at Oklahoma State University in 1988, where he also finished his college basketball career. He entered the NBA draft in 1988, but was passed up multiple times by all teams and went undrafted. It was a 25-team NBA at the time and in multiple rounds Starks was not chosen by any of them. Starks did not give up and continued to play basketball in independent leagues. He finally signed a contract with the Golden State Warriors but played only 36 games for them while averaging 4.1 points per game and 9 minutes. He was not happy with his playing time there but Golden State also had Mitch Richmond which they drafted that year at number five, who also won Rookie of the Year that season. There just wasn't room for John on the team. After not being offered a contract, Stark spent 1989 and part of 1990 in the CBA until he got a chance and tried out for the New York Knicks. John's chances to make the Knicks were slim to none, and if it were not for a certain development during one of the practices, he would have never been a Nick. On that day, in one of the practices, Starks, standing at six foot three, tried to go for it and take his best shot to make it and dunk over none other than Patrick Ewing. Ewing, on the other hand, would have none of it. It didn't go well. Ewing slammed Starks on the floor, blocking him, and that way made sure it would never happen again. At, at the same time, Ewing created a Knicks legend, but just didn't know it at the time. During that altercation, Starks twisted his knee and by the NBA rules at the time, the Knicks were not allowed to let him go unless the injury healed by December. Well, it did not heal and the Knicks were forced to keep him on the roster. 
After returning from injury, the Knicks were impressed by John's drive and his work ethic. They gave him a chance and he was able to play 20 minutes per game that season. He averaged 7.6 points in 61 games. He got the chance of a life thanks to Patrick Ewing going for the block and not practice. Because of that situation, Starks has referred to Ewing as his saving grace. As NBA seasons passed, John Starks became a true Nick and his role increased. He finally became a starting shooting guard for the team. He worked and worked every single day and would not relinquish the opportunity that he received. He showed more heart, more will, desire, and passion than any player in recent NBA memory, and Knicks fans loved him for it. He was the true embodiment of the New York grit. New York was a city of hard work where nothing came easy. Starks was a man who worked hard and nothing ever came easy for him. Starks got to know himself around the league as one of the toughest players and a great defender. He fit the mentality of those 90s Knicks to a cue, which was, we don't take crap from anyone, and if you want to win, we will make sure you will remember the physical beating for next time. Starks was tough and very passionate. Because of his passion, there was a few times when Starks would prove himself to be a little too short-tempered and it would sometimes cost him and the team. One of those situations happened in the 1993 playoffs when the Knicks were playing the Indiana Pacers and Starks headbutted Reggie Miller during an altercation. I can remember he kept hitting me with bowls uh, during the playoffs game. And he was, I think it was game three. He hit me with a bowl and I told the referee, and the referee wasn't, Starks shut up and play. I like, okay, I know, I, I can handle this. And so <laughs> Patrick said, you cool? I said, yeah, I'm cool. So I ran down, scored on him and ran up to court and I was so mad, I mean, like, oh man, I would want to just take my fist and just put it right through his face, right? <laughs> and uh, just, you know, I'm talking to him, you know, in a polite way, and we just got close, and I just, bam, I might, just, something just came up and tapped him like that, and he, you know, he dramatic, <laughs> oh, you be like, this and that, and I can remember Oak and Patrick just beating on me, and I didn't feel him until after the game and when I saw the replay and they was hitting me, bam, bam, bam. And my mother called Patrick and told him, if you ever put your hands on my son. Starks was ejected and the Knicks ended up losing that game, but John showed the entire league that he will not take any crap from anyone in the NBA. Starks wasn't that big or super talented, but was a hard worker and a tough son of a bitch. He would not back down from anybody, and I mean anyone. Look for yourself. There were many great moments in John Stark's career, and here are some of the most deserving to mention. Number one, I think the biggest highlight of John Stark's career was the dunk over Horace Grant and the GOAT, Michael Jordan. This happened during game two of the Eastern Conference Finals. Starks was on the court's right corner and guarded by B.J. Armstrong, but then drove along the baseline and with his left hand dunked over Horace Grant and Michael Jordan. As you can imagine, the Madison Square Garden crowd went crazy, and thanks to that, John Starks became known all over the world. Number two, during the 1994 NBA Finals against the Houston Rockets, 
John Starks had two unbelievable games. Game 6 was a positive, unbelievable game for John. Game 7, on the other hand, was one of the worst Game 7s for a starting player in NBA history. In Game 6, John Starks played a team high 46 minutes, scored 27 points, had 8 assists, 2 steals. He went 50% from the field at 9 for 18 and 55% from 3 point range at 5 of 9. He played an unbelievable game and had a shot at winning the championship for the Knicks on the last second three-point attempt, which was blocked by Olajuwon. In Game 7, Starks came out very aggressive but had the worst Game 7 he could possibly imagine. He went 2 of 18 from the field in shooting and 0 for 11 in three-point attempts. This was a disaster game for John Starks and I can assume the worst game of his career. Because of that disaster of a performance in Game 7, no one really talks about Game 6 in which Starks was crazy hot. Now being guarded by Kenny Smith, John Starks for three, cannot get off. Starks is now 1 for 11. Here comes Anthony. Starks again for three. Anthony for Starks, shooting again. Starks is now one for 13. Starks for three. Now the tip. Control by the next. Starks again for three. And on Harper. Here's Hubert Davis who just checked in. Three point attempt. Three, 94. Number three. This is not a singular game, but the rivalry between Starks and Reggie Miller was crazy. The Knicks faced Reggie and Indiana Pacers multiple times in the 90s and Starks and Reggie always went at each other. Here are some highlights of those matchups between the two and a few comments. To tell you the truth, I really don't talk trash. Um, I think that incident was more because, uh, you know, John was running out and I was hitting threes on him and uh, he got a little bit frustrated. I didn't like that either <laughs> okay. at that time because, you know, back then you had to earn your stripes. Right. As a player, as a rookie coming into this league, you had to earn your stripes. Nothing was given to you. It's a little different now uh, being a young player, but back then you literally had to pretty much fight your way into this league. Number four, another great moment for John Starks was hitting a buzzer beater three pointer to win the game against the Phoenix Suns in 1997. Also in 1997, John Starks won the NBA Sixth Man Award after Allen Houston took his starting spot on the New York Knicks roster. Two point eight assists, two point seven rebounds, and oh. 
for a steal a game while coming off the bench in 76 of the 77 games in which he played. Congratulations, John, and thank you, Sats. John's career stats are 12.5 points per game, 3.6 assists, 2.5 rebounds, 34% from three, and 41.2% in field goals. As we said before, John Starks was a solid player as a starter and a great complement to Patrick Ewing in the 90s. His only All-Star season had him average 19 points per game. Starks participated in an NBA slam dunk contest. Oh yeah. John Starks off the bounce, the reverse jam. Oh, even Starks with another two-foot takeoff. Oh, that's big. Again, he went to the bounce. He was in the NBA's top 20 players defensively in two seasons and the top 20 players in threes in seven seasons. John Starks was a great New York Knicks starter and role player. For the passion he displayed on a nightly basis, he is remembered as a Knicks legend by most. He was always ready and was tougher than most on the basketball court. After his playing career was over, John dedicated himself to his foundation that he started all the way back in 1994 to help kids that could not afford a college education. In 1994, I established the John Starks Foundation. Me coming out of high school, I wasn't offered a scholarship, so I had to go through the traditional uh, Pell Grant way to be able to go to college. So when I got an opportunity to figure out what I wanted to do to give back, uh, I thought this would be a great opportunity to raise money for graduating high school seniors to give them opportunity to go to college like I had the opportunity to do to realize uh, their dreams. So I'm very fortunate enough since 1994 we didn't put a lot of students through college and uh, we want to continue to grow the foundation and help kids. For me personally when he played John was my favorite NBA player. I loved his emotion, passion and cockiness. He will always be a part of my basketball journey and someone I looked up to. There was only one time I met John Starks, but cannot find a photograph of it. The meeting took place during a Westchester Wildfire tryout at Sunny Purchase, where John Starks was the head coach. There were so many people there. I was a good player, but found out about the tryout only one week before. I was never able to prepare to the level I needed to, to even have a chance at the tryout. I went, was cut, but at least met my childhood hero, John Starks. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.